Hi guys! Sometimes after spending nine years in France, I feel like nothing will surprise me. And of course, as soon as I say that, the next day, something surprises me. It's like a little cuckoo reminder, you don't know everything about France. So today's video is about some very random but surprising trivia I didn't know about France. I've only got nine random facts for this video, so I'm sure there's a lot more random things out there I don't know, so don't hesitate to leave those in the comments below. But otherwise, if you're ready to be amazed and shocked about some things you might not have known about France, then c'est parti! We all know France's obsession with the baguette and bread in general, and I have no shame saying that I now have an obsession as well, but did you know that there is some superstition surrounding the bread and the baguette in France? So apparently if you put your bread upside down, it is considered bad luck. So when I first heard this, I thought, okay, but which end is the right end for the baguette? But it's actually flipping it this way, so onto its side. Legend has it back when there was an executioner in each city that the executioner wouldn't have time to go to the boulangerie and pick up their bread when there was an execution that day. So the baker would kindly turn over on its back a loaf of bread to signal to everyone it was taken, it's the executioners. And so little by little, it kind of became superstitious to turn your bread over because it signaled bad luck and death and not very nice things. So the next time you go to throw your bread on the table, think again which way it landed. Sticking to the food theme really quickly, I am a big croissant fan. So if I had to choose between a pain au chocolat in the morning or a croissant, I'm usually diving for the croissant. And I thought the croissant was another fabulous French invention that has fallen beautifully into my life and come to find out, shocker, it is not French. The croissant was actually born in Austria underneath the name of a Kipfro, if I'm pronouncing that even slightly close. It's not exactly the same thing as a croissant, but it is a crescent-shaped um, pastry that's flaky, made with butter. It's pretty much the croissant's close cousin. So the next time you go for a delightful viennoiserie from Vienna, think about where it's really coming from mind blown. I don't own any pets in France, but I've always thought it's really interesting that when you welcome, for example, a dog into your family in France, there is a letter assigned to each year. So imagine that 2020 is the letter P. Well, if your dog is born in 2020, then its name has to start with the letter P on all official paperwork. So it could be Penelope on everything for the veterinarian's office or on its passport or any of, you know, its breeding papers, but then you can call it whatever you want at home. If you want it to be Snickers, it can be Snickers, but it does need to officially have a name with the letter P. And another interesting fact about naming your pets is that it is still illegal in France to name a pet pig Napoleon. Even 200 years after this man's death, it is still a crime to name a pet pig Napoleon. It's apparently considered very rude to name your pet pig after the emperor, and it is seen as disgraceful. But a little trivia about myself, pigs are actually my absolute favorite, favorite animal. So if anyone wants to name their pet pig Kate, I would take that as a compliment. But the French don't. Don't name your pig Napoleon. Coming from the US where we have a ridiculous amount of fast food restaurants, it wasn't that shocking to me when I arrived in France and there seemed to be a lot of McDonald's everywhere. But what I didn't realize is France is actually McDonald's second most profitable market. So there are over a thousand McDonald's restaurants throughout all of France. Now, the US can lay claim to over 14,000 McDonald's, so I'm not saying it comes close to the amount that we have in the US, but it's still pretty numerous. It's not the most healthiest of fun facts that I'm giving you today, but I sure do love a good McFlurry. So the French at one point colonized a huge part of the world, so much so that there are over 20 countries that celebrate their Independence Day from being independent from the French. 
Now today, there's no more colonies, but there are French territories overseas, and they're dotted in the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and South America. And thanks to all of these territories, there's actually 12 different time zones in France, which is the most amount of time zones in any country. And what's even more interesting is that France used to be on the same time zone as London. And in 1940, when the Germans invaded during World War II, they forced France to go on the same time zone as Berlin, and no one ever canceled the change afterwards. I did a video the other week about embarrassing faux amis. So it's those words that look the same in French and English, but actually don't mean the same thing at all. And this one is about the really embarrassing ones when you make a mistake. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. But this trivia reminds me of these fun facts kind of about this video because there's actually some towns in France that still have pretty vulgar names that nobody's ever changed. So for example, there's a town in Burgundy called Anus. There's a town in uh, the southeast of France that's called Chet, which can be a female kitten, but it also can be female genitals, so a little fuzzy there. And then there's also a city called Moncu, which literally translates to my butt. And you can like buy air from Moncu, you can buy air from my butt, and you can buy water from my butt. I think they do a pretty good job of selling things from that town for its funny name, but the French have just decided not to change it. And they've apparently changed other names because it's become like slang that's a bit inappropriate, but apparently these have just stuck. France is the most popular tourist destination in the world. There's more than 80 million people that travel to visit France each year. And because I live in Paris, I get to see a lot of these people walking around with their fanny packs and their maps and their cameras and their selfie sticks. You gotta love them. What I didn't know is that the person that we have to thank for the selfie stick was actually Philip Can, because, well, Philippe, if we do the French pronunciation, because Philippe Can in 1997, he didn't invent the selfie stick, but he did invent the camera phone. And thanks to that camera phone, we've got selfie sticks. So whether your team, I love them or I hate them, the next time you're walking down the street and a tourist stops in the middle and starts taking photos and you can't get around them and you're starting to get frustrated, just remember that it is a Frenchman that we have to thank for this. Learning to drive in France was pretty nuts for me personally. I come from an area in the US with a lot of space, straight roads, everything's flat, lots of stop signs, it's all very, very clear. It wasn't necessarily the case in France. I remember at the beginning very, being very surprised by the amount of roundabouts. I mean, there's a lot of ronds in France. What I didn't know and I found out is that actually half of the world's roundabouts are in France. I used to think that they had so many, but I thought it was because of where I came from that I thought it was so many, but apparently they really do have an obsessive amount of rond And even funnier is in the city of Paris, there's so many stoplights or roundabouts that there's actually not one single stop sign to be found in this entire city. I feel like there must be a reason why and I can't figure it out. So if you know, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. I have said many times and I will continue to shout it from the rooftops. I love public transportation in France. It's so great. I love the metro in Paris. I love the tram in Bordeaux. I love the high-speed TGV trains. I love the cheap airlines. I could go on and on. What I didn't know is that France already had a public transportation system in the 1600s. They have proof that there was actually already a horse-drawn carriage with multiple levels so that people could get on and off at a designated route around Paris. I mean, France, you are impressing me with this kind of stuff. And another random fact is that it's around this same time period that the oldest bridge in Paris today was built. So it was in the 1600s and it's called Pont Neuf. And what's ironic about this is that Pont means bridge and Neuf means new. So it's actually called the new bridge. And now it's the oldest bridge in Paris, but what can you do? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my video this week. I would love it if you have any really random facts you stumbled upon about France that you thought were really funny. Please leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, I'll see you next week. Bisous.